Chickens are in fact in charge because I am going to make a video. And hello, Mega Leech. How you doing? Yeah. Turn that chicken straight on. Just like them being straight on. There we go. That's the thing. All right. <clears throat> Ugh. Let me take a couple minutes because I'm just talking about making the cocktail because I've already made it. <sighs> In fact, I might pour the second one. Clarified eggnog versus unclarified eggnog. This around him. Ah, oh. Okay, so first I am going to pour. Get the sexy slow motion pour shot. There, clear eyes. All right. And we just pull. Pouring clarified eggnog. Okay. This is probably the only video I'm making tonight. Might make a short one. We'll see what mood I'm in. Okay, this over here. Okay. Oh. Okay, turn this on. Man, that looks bleak without the back colours. Oh, let's turn the back colours on. I forgot to turn the back colours on. Just a bit more like it. There you go. Right, right. You bloody well, right. All right, uh, recording this, recording this. <clears throat> G'day cocktail lovers. In this lead up to the eggnog season, I've been making eggnogs and testing different eggnogs. And I think there's probably some people going, I wonder if, will he do it? If you know me in my channel, I'm going to do it. I'm going to attempt a clarified eggnog to see what it tastes like. That's right. This is a Christmas Milk Punch Monday. I'm going to make my life easier with this by using a store-bought eggnog, and I'm going to use some of the traditional sort of spirits and flavors that go into a lot of eggnogs to go with it. 
I am using the eggnog in place of milk if you didn't work that out. So it'll be the spirits added to eggnog with a citrus to make the eggnog curdle so then I can pour it through a filter and clarify it. One thing I'll be doing, one thing I'll be doing different to my traditional milk clarified cocktails is the ratio. Usually when you're doing a milk clarified cocktail, you do it four parts of the cocktail to one part milk. This, because this is eggnog, I want the eggnog to be the feature. I'm actually doing it 50-50. So this will be comparatively low alcohol content compared to a lot of my clarified cocktails, but it'll be about average or possibly even a little bit higher than your average eggnog. In terms of the booze, I'm going for some spiced rum. This is from the Bricks Distillery in Sydney. It's actually a little collaboration they did with a bakery that's near them. They call it Trail Mix, infused with pastries, fruit, and spices. It's an actual good spiced rum. And less good, I think a whiskey as it wants something with a lot of flavor. This is peanut butter whiskey. Um, I, I guess technically it has a base of whiskey. It's absurdly sweet. It, I, I would not call it whiskey. It doesn't taste like whiskey. It's super sweet. If you just like something super sweet, it kind of tastes like peanut brittle, that's for you. And I, I've been told reliably, have it with ginger ale and it's quite nice. It's not objectionable, just not really whiskey, but it is a strong flavor and it's a desserty flavor. Hey, eggnog, why not? Slightly uh, more traditional flavors. I'm going to put in some pimento dram, also known as allspice dram and then there'll just be citrus and some sugar syrup going in. So here's the ratios I'm using. As I said, it's going to be equal eggnog and whiskey. So you can scale this As I said, the split between the eggnog and the other components is going to be 50-50. So you can scale this up or down depending how much you want to make. So if we say there's four parts eggnog here, I'm also adding one part spiced rum, one part whiskey. If we say there's four parts eggnog there, the other part will be one part, fuck, say it again. So if there's four parts eggnog on one side, putting the drink together will be one part citrus, one part spiced rum, one part whiskey, half a part pimento dram, and half a part sugar syrup. I pour all that together into the eggnog, give it a little stir to circulate it around, and then we leave that, and it's hopefully going to clarify. I left it for a while and it looks like we're getting, I left it for a while, it looks like we are getting that curdling. It looks quite different to when I normally do it with milk. So when I put it through the filter, I wasn't sure how it was going to go. And in fact, so much came through so quickly and so cloudy, I thought maybe there was a hole in the filter paper. Turns out uh, it, there was just very fine grain in that curdle and more of it had to settle. Eventually it was settled enough to filter the drink and it started coming through clear. So once it was coming through clear, I transferred everything around and was putting it into a large bottle to store it because I did make a pretty big batch. It did come out beautiful and clear with a nice color. Best way to show that off, you know me, I'm gonna pour it into a rocks glass over a big chunk of my sexy clear ice. which gives us clarified eggnog. Trying it for the first time now. Wow, it's really nice. It does not taste like alcohol at all. And there is a little bit of that eggnog flavor in there. I guess theoretically I could have this warmed up like you sometimes have eggnog warm, but uh, this is a very interesting like taste. I feel like I need to compare it to actual eggnog. Oh look, I have some. 
here's some I prepared earlier. So this is a really boozy eggnog I made. Mm. The booze elements are much sharper and much more pronounced in this. And it is actually creamier. And this one, <laughs> this severely overpowers this. So if you want a much lighter taste that still has some of that eggnog flavor, hey, a clarified eggnog is pretty damn tasty. In the meantime, I am going to finish this off and then finish this off, or maybe finish this off and finish this off. Whatever, that's me, back on my double fisting bullshit. So until I see you again, I'll say cheers. Uh, okay. Hub's Cantina. Yes, you're probably not used to seeing that many cocks on a stream. Who just texted me? All right, switch a few things off and sit down. Okay. Uh, now I can sit down and um, <laughs> I do like the four cocks blocking your view. That's a good line. I like it. Oh, ha. I so realize who that is. Um, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. Uh, I think given the comparative strength of the flavor in these drinks, I should have this one first because the eggnog is real strong flavors and real good. Oh, and the chickens aren't in charge anymore, so I can get rid of the banner. Dunzo. Just chilling out. Man, this is fucking nice. This is really good, actually. God damn, successful experiment. I love it. Oof. Oh, man, I, I, I think I've said this before. I wish there was a simple thing like a, a sensor or even the equivalent of a litmus test with the litmus paper that measures acidity, something where you could just go bing and it would tell you the alcohol content of the liquid. I just think that'd be really handy. Science, get on it, okay? I think there are things that sort of do it, but I don't think there's a simple affordable device that you can just put in a drink and go bing. I mean, you know, it'd be uh, good for bars too with creepers who either try to trick someone into drinking a, a too strong drink or a spike drink. I think there are things that can uh, indicate that a drink's been spiked. But a thing that's related to drink spiking, but I guess technically isn't drink spiking, is um, some piece of shit trying to get their date drunk. So the date has poor judgment uh, and uh, they all, they, give them doubles or triples and say they're singles. That's what I mean about um, it would be nice if there was something that you just go bingo, bango, bongo, and it told you the alcohol content. Of the now, I want it for when I'm making cocktails to get an indicator of the alcohol content so I can go, ah, this is how drunk I'm going to get drinking this. Like most clarified cocktails, this is really deceptive. doesn't taste like alcohol at all. It is comparatively low ABV. So it would be, it's half, actually it's way more than half non-alcohol. It is, God, it's almost three quarters non, it's probably three quarters non-alcohol and quarter alcohol. So, if I poured four ounces into a glass, four shots into a glass, it would be one shot of alcohol. So this is, man, this is quite low alcohol. 
Mm. Okay, but it's a friggin' successful experiment. I'll tell you that for free. It's yummy. What is... I'm so bad with describing flavors. It's a honey. I'm always saying it's honey. It's a sort of honey. It's very sweet. It's the peanuts. I just realized I use the peanut butter whiskey. It's the peanut brittle flavor is carrying through. It's very sweet. I mean, you're probably more in danger from the diabetes from this than you are from... Uh, from uh, alcohol. Oh, that is, hmm, that is a much stronger drink. Hmm. Oh, that's got those really earthy booze flavors in there. Anyway, you know, quiet start to the night. Maybe I will make another video, make a short one. Let me see what's happening. Oh, I am getting my cocktail shirts advertised to me. Ugh. Anyway, it's my potential drinks. My Trello board. Decide what drink to make. Why is Trello taking so long to load? Oh, that's right. There's some coffee, uh, coffee liqueur in this. Hmm. Oh, I should have tried coffee with the um, clarified. Yes, we're having trouble loading the board. I noticed. What is it about? I've been having weird troubles today. The internet's working, but like I couldn't get the streaming services to work on TV. Uh, man, I'm not sure what I've learned. Okay, so. Uh, apricot brandy. Uh, I could fake it. Because I was kind of interested. It's, it's like a martini turned into uh, a daisy. Mm, 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 mm. That's so yummy. It's a really intense. It's in another sunken boat. Oh man, I just randomly picked up so many tequila and mezcal recipes. Light rum, orange liqueur, lemon juice, grenadine. Hmm. Huh. Well, the brain no worky. Look at that. Come, what's the standard decory? I mean, I know this. I'm just rum, lime juice, and sugar. And why, okay, I need to know, why is this called a Bill Chandler cocktail? Hey, Strictly Sega. <laughs> My favorite episode. Oh, um, dude, I don't even remember all the stuff we did. I know YouTube censored us when we did the Harry Potter drinking game. Uh, oh, the Green Hornet one. See, that was one of the more obscure ones. Not many people saw that Green Hornet movie. Um, 
I kind of enjoyed, oh, it was a joke. He wasn't really that upset, but we pretended AZ was super upset by the Japanese horror we watched, like Tokyo Gore Police. Um, but just generally, he'd act like I was traumatizing him if we watched horror like 30 Days of Night. Watching movies. Yeah. Um, actually, that's a good point. Okay. Let me um, do that. In fact, I'll bring them up. Uh, I'll, I'll bring that up. Search across my channel. Watching movies. Okay, so we did the Hobbit movies, the Hunger Game. Hobo with a shotgun. That was a fun one. That was such a weird movie. Uh, Pacific Rim, Dread. <laughs> Dark Knight Rises. Oh, that was the other one we watched, Big Tit Zombie. Did all the Harry Potter movies, 30 Days of Night. Zombieland, which is a movie I like. Tokyo Gore Police. That actually doesn't bring up all of them because it didn't bring up Green Hornet. Um, does that bring anything else up? Hunger Games, Hobo with a Shotgun, Dread. Oh, the Harry Potters, which JK Rowling ruined. Zombieland. That's interesting. They don't all come up, I don't think. Yeah, see, Battle Royale didn't come up. And I mean, Dread, I love as a movie. So I'm hoping the watching thing with Dread's good. Hey, Dr. Jones, how are you going? Hmm. Oh, that's right. I had to look up a, a Bill Chandler cocktail that to try and find out why it's called the Bill Chandler. Ten of the most famous whiskey drinkers in history. Okay, who are they? Ah, uh, Frank Sinatra. Oh, Chandler, that's why Chandler came up. Winston Churchill, Ava Gardner, Haruki Murakami. William Faulkner, George Bernard Shaw, Christina Hendricks. Hillary Clinton likes whiskey, apparently. Okay. Um, so it was on Gifford's Guide then. Let me look up Bill Chandler. What's a Bill Chandler history? Okay, it's a hundred year old recipe. Okay, so. Uh, Bacardi rum, lemon juice, Jamaica rum, Cointreau grenadine. One of the best recipes for cocktails in this book, if carefully made, but great care must be taken to follow the recipe exactly, or it will not turn out well. More citrus than sweet cocktails. How much 
It's only three quarters of an ounce. Hmm. <laughs> Ranger pipe, you do it. Yeah, it's a bit weird. Um, hey, Dr. Jones, I'm doing fairly well. Thank you very much. Just thinking of making a short course of it. Well, actually, maybe I should, because I've got my clear eyes here, maybe I should do something. Bill Chandler, you'd serve up here. Yeah. Okay. One that I'd serve on ice. Gin, apple jock. Okay, let me look up uh, Angel's face. Okay, that's weird. Angel. C O. Art of Italicus Cocktails, Angel Face, Angel's Draft, Angel's Advocate. Now yeah, maybe it was Angel Face rather than Angel's Face. Let me see. Gin, Calvados, Epitico, Parenti. So what have we got? Huh. So that's someone else's recipe. Equal parts. Huh. No, just trying to find a good recipe. You enjoyed the Green Hornet. You knew where your Blu-ray was. Nice. Oh, well, that was always the intention. I think we had fun doing the Hunter Games. Um, no, Dr. Jones, ask away. I have never worked in a bar. I just started getting into cocktails, I don't know, about eight years ago. Got kind of serious about it in the last five years. And like a lot of people, got really into home bartending during COVID. So I'm just uh, an enthusiastic amateur, a.k.a. a pisshead. Um, oh gosh, you have worked in a bar and now you can't be around yet yeah, rum. No, sense association is incredibly powerful. Um, uh, there's no two ways about it. Um, and smell can, uh, do wild things to humans. It's Princess Mary's pride. Do you want on, which one uh, must have one that would go on ice? Orange juice, maybe another time. Pour me another. That sounds like a fun glass. That's just a great name for a drink. Pour me another. In Okay, yeah, of course you serve it up. I'm going to make that at some point. Sweet lady, scotch. Okay. Wait, what's that one called? Sweet lady. I mean, I don't have to follow these rules. I can do my own way. Sweet lady number one, sweet lady number two. Number one, yes, yeah, served up. Okay. Number two is absolutely unrelated and is served on ice. Cool. And still on a quest to find something suits here. So you clean the bar at the end of the shift and still the sweet smell of rum, damn. Dr. Jones, you're the same. Started making cocktails the last two, three years. COVID did that to a lot of us. Although, yeah, I've been tracking back on YouTube. So I 
sort of been getting started seriously getting into cocktails about eight years ago and very seriously into making my own about five years ago played against uh, sesame oil infused gin i don't really like sesame oil as a flavor but fat washed oil washed spirits are really interesting i've got actually i've got an olive leaf gin um so it's not really like olive oil, but it does have that kind of savory element in it, which is quite nice. Equivit date reduction. That's, that's a fun sounding drink, quite honestly. Habituario. Tequila, mezcal, vermouth and absinthe. Fun. Jack Frost Blue. A brave bull. I'm gonna make that. That sounds fun. It's like a, a, a tequila old fashioned, but with a coffee liqueur as a sweetener rather than sugar. Uh, the clear ice is no point in that because it's going to be black. An Amen Corner, Bourbon, Aperol, Amaro. The Star, Apple Brandy, Sweet Vermouth, Corn Syrup. You know, maybe I should just bring the stop obsessing about this and I'll do it another night. I'll just have another drinky tonight. These are all served up, all these ones I've got. None of them really on ice although that tequila coffee one would be on ice cherry bomb oh cherry bomb number one cherry bomb number two blanco tequila montenegro amaro Aqua Bianca, Luxata Maraschino, Cherry Hearing. Oh, that's just getting, I was, that's getting very fussy. As if I don't like fussy. Okay, I've gone with a simpler recipe. It's basically the same one. Yeah, you know, maybe I'll make that. I've, always, I've been wanting to make that one for a little while. Big boy level cocktail with a cool name. Nice. Ooh, that sounds like a nice drink too. Cachaca, cherry liqueur, fresh lime, club soda. Sounds like a nice highball, that one. I haven't really done any infusions for a little while. Most fun to do. And fat washing is interesting. So infusing oils or fats. Last one was probably the rum I infused with um, coconut oil, which was yummy. Really nice coconut rum came out of that. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to make the cherry bomb because I was going to make that for a while. So, and that would suit this glass. So, you know what? I'm just going to do it. It'll be pretty quick. Ch -ch 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 Cherry bomb. And of course we put a cherry on it. I oh, thought cherry and a green olive? Gross. What's that about? Unless you want some salinity in it, I guess. All right. I'm going to do this. Oh, okay. So got to get this chair out of the way. Ugh. Will I put the chickens in charge? Or you just put up with me doing this? Gotta move a couple of things. Move a couple of things. Yeah. That's, yeah, I, I was kind of like, what? A green olive? What? Um... 
All right, get some stuff ready. Okay. Ooh, now there's, where's my cherry jar? There's hardly any cherries left in this. How long is it gonna take me to skewer one? Ha, ah, I cheated, I isolated one. Okay, let's sit that there. Ah, put all of these away. You go there. And in fact, you go there. You have no place being on display. You are my secret shame. Away you go. Uh, and I'm not using you or you. So we are. Getting the Trello happening. Wait, what's in a galvanized nail? I'm trying to... Elderflower, sour apple syrup. Okay, I gotta make that at some point. Actually, that should be a full length one. What am I thinking? Yeah, that's what I said. Uh, what's I calling this? A cherry bomb. Uh, chocolate bitters. Oh, I need Amaro Montenegro. Montenegro Amaro. Where is my Amaro Montenegro? There we go. Run on low on a couple of things, that's okay. Okay. Maro Montenegro, Blanco tequila, with my neat ceramic. Oh, I'm going to bring this over here. I'm just going to show this off. My ceramic tequila bottle. Yee. Ah, uh, yes, those uh, WD 40s. The secret shame was the sheepdog uh, peanut butter whiskey. Uh, what do you want? Maraschino liqueur and cherry liqueur. You need everything in here. Why do I keep closing it? Maraschino and cherry. Salto cherry. Okay, and chocolate de bitters. What are my chocolate de mole bitters? There they go. All right, I think that's everything. I think I don't have a goddamn jig here. Two ounces. God damn it. Do I care? Yeah, I kind of care. Okay. Gotta disappear. 30 seconds. Get my jigger, which is in the kitchen, because I was doing such a hey hi. Wanna get meet the feebles. <laughs> Noish. Ah, Rumpa Stompa. Great, great intense movie. All right, I'm almost ready now. Okay, well, let's actually get some of this ready. Tequila. I decided if I'm going to keep this bottle when it's empty. It's kind of decorative. 
Probably should keep it just for decoration purposes. Uh, right, 10 mils of all of these things. Do, do, do. I think I just stood in something sticky, which means I, yep, I spilled some beverage here. Right, what is that? Okay, that's unpleasant is what that is. Okay. Um, right. I'm going to get the close-ups making the drink first. So that Dr. Jones... Oh, yeah, Screwball's a better known brand. Uh, that sheepdog I have is just outlandishly overly sweet. Tastes like peanut brittle. And hello, Liam. How you doing? All right. Uh, I think that's ready. Might start making it. Machine home liqueur. My Montenegro. And chocolate bitters. All right. Turn it. This up. Oh, I don't have any ice. The fuck was I thinking? Jesus. Poor organization on my part. Sorry. Just give me a minute. I'm just going to get some ice. Oh, I feel it. very foolish with the no ice situation. But I'm back. Let's put some ice in the little glass. something if I keep doing that. Oh, that is tasting good. Cherry. Okay. 
that. I remember to take a picture for publicity purposes. Uh, okay. I get a my camera, aka my phone. It's a really nice color. Oh, what am I doing? I gotta get ready to do the talky bit. Alright. This will be quick because it's for a short video. So the talking has to be less than 60 seconds. So see how that goes. Line this up. Uh looks a boot right. That's ready, that's ready, let's go. G'day cocktail lovers. This rather attractive looking drink is a tequila based cocktail. I thought I was saying the wrong word and I said the right word. God damn. G'day cocktail lovers. This rather attractive looking drink is a tequila based cocktail called a cherry bomb. And if you like me, the song's stuck in your head now. Let's see, is the drink worth getting a song stuck in your head? Hmm. Oh, this is really tasty. This is worth an earworm. Here's how we make it. In a mixing glass, put two ounces or 60 mils of Blanco tequila, and then a third of an ounce, around 10 mils of cherry liqueur. Same amount, a third of an ounce or 10 mils of maraschino liqueur and then a third of an ounce or 10 mils of Amaro Montenegro. We round things out with two dashes of chocolate bitters. Add ice to the glass, stir that for 20 to 25 seconds to chill and dilute the drink, and then strain that into a rocks glass over a chunk of ice, and fitting the name, we'll garnish that with a maraschino cherry. Arguably a tequila old-fashioned, and we've just been really interesting with what we used instead of sugar syrup, but it's a great collection of flavors. I recommend you try a ch 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 bomb. Oh my god, what a dork. What an absolute dork. But sometimes you gotta be a goddamn dork. Switching everything up. Right. Now, I'm definitely not making any more videos. I'm just gonna sit down and chill out. Turn that off. Okay. <laughs> she can say, you, you love me doing the ch 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 yeah, well, it's just, it's impossible to resist. I love you doing the commentary. Yeah, you got to talk. G'day, cocktail lovers. Yeah, I love my catchphrases. Regular anger as it was just g'day viewers. Which, as someone pointed out to me, is what Paul Hogan used to say. Oh, God, strictly saying, I said, just... Um, by the by, I was looking for things to watch and um, the movie channel on Foxtel, which is where I finally watched the doco, not quite Hollywood, about exploitation. Almost every film in that doco is available to watch on Foxtel. Like really weird ones I didn't think were available, like Mad Dog Morgan, Patrick and Turkey Shoot. I could watch them all if I wanted to. Oh, oh my God, that's fucking yum. Ooh. This, this is a this is a grown-up sweet drink as opposed to the ones that, you know, are a lot of fruit juice and sugars. And I'm, I tend to actually like the tropical drinks that, you know, I know rum is bad for you, Strictly Sega. 
but I tend to like the tropical drinks with the, the rum and fruit juice and sugar. This is a grown up sweet drink and the Amaro is just, and the chocolate bitters, just a little, uh, little edge of bitterness to cut the sweetness of those liqueurs. That is fucking tasty though. Oh man, that is really good. All right. Umbrella has a streaming service, free one called Broly. And they have the Osploitation films on it too. Okay, now I feel like looking that up. Uh, see what I can find. It was Tina Turner's birthday today too. She only died this year. Uh, Broly streaming. I'm not going to search that. Screen Hub. Oh, okay. Independent Australian New Zealand distributed Umbrella Entertainment. Broly will launch with over 300 titles, including gems from Australian independent cinema, such as Babadook, Two Hands, fucking brilliant movie from 1999. Young Heath Ledger. I fucking love Two Hands. It's such a good movie. Classics like TV series Sweat, Erskineville Kings with Hugh Jackman, and Cut from 2000 with Kylie Minogue. Oh, nice. They've got Indigenous uh, films featuring Indigenous actors and Indigenous stories and nonfiction. Special collection includes Australian Nightmares, exploring the best of Aussie horror and all out Ausploitation, best genre films from the 70s and 80s. And special features, a lost art that was usually confined to DVD extras will be available to watch with the collections. Neat. I love special features and makings of and whatnots. Uh, you can access Broly from 23rd November through Apple and Google Play, Apple TV. Oh, there you go. Or at broly.com.au. Let me have a look. Welcome to Broly. So it's B R O L L I E. Oh, good. Razorback. Oh, they've got some very mainstreamy ones on there too. Driving Miss Daisy, Last Emperor, Showgirls. Another round. These can't all be free, surely. Exclusive to Broly. Oh, God. Kids. Harmony Kareen's first movie. My God. Oh, and The Hitcher. The original Hitcher. I actually can't believe they did a remake of it because no one saw it. But Stone, what a, oh my God. Oh my God. And uh, I should, actually, I should be showing this screen while I do this. Can't seem to get a copy of The Big Steel. I loved that movie. Oh, yes. Uh, Bad Boy Bubby, classic. Um, as in classically horrible. Oh, yes, that was the thing Tina Turner had for a while, the big muscular sax player. She was simply the best. Um, I'll actually, look, I'll, I will actually share this Broly thing because it's interesting. Uh... Did that work? Yeah, that worked. Look at all that hair Nicole Hidman has. Dead Kids. I remember Dead Kids. It was a real drive-in movie. I never saw it. And, it. and then it was on video as well. I kind of always wanted to see it. Right-hand man, Celia, Tom White. Black Robe. That was like a let that was a very similar story to Dances with Wolves. 
and that actor was in one of my all-time favorite films um jesus from montreal this french canadian actor cut june i assume that's the david lynch one the bloody judge Blackfellas, Hotel Toronto, Singapore Sling. Town Like Alice, goddamn. The two Ronnies in Australia. Oh, there's a very young Noah Taylor in The Prisoner of St. Petersburg. Never heard of it, but I recognize Noah Taylor. Oh, that looks like a, an oldie, The North of Moonby, The Road to Mandalay. Break him around, The Retrial. That sounds like a, a doco. God, best of Bert Newton. Jesus. Squizzy Taylor. I never saw that. That guy was like a musical theatre star. Australia loved doing period films and most of them were never very successful. But oh, look, horror, possession. <laughs> Winnie the Pooh, blood and honey. George Romero's Day of the Dead. Man, I'd actually love to rewatch that. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <gasps> That's the original. Okay. Circus of Fear. Come to Daddy. Okay. That sounds like a porno. Oh, they've got Patrick. I Trapped the Devil. Thirst, I va vaguely remember. Favarium's not very old. My God. First Nations films and shows. Ozploitation. Body Melt, Midnight Spares. Barry McKenzie. Dead Kids, Patrick, Thirst. These are all things. Oh, Turkey Shoot. Oh, that's such a trashy film. That is so trashy. It's another Nicole Kidman one. Oh, Tom Berlinson. God, they wanted him to be a star for a while. Tom Berlinson. Wills and Burke. That's like Gary McDonald in that. Don's Party. That's a frigging classic. Death in Brunswick. I love that movie. That is a fucking really good comedy. Death in Brunswick. Houseboat Horror. Inner the Damned. Sco oh, Scobie Malone. I think that's Jack Thompson being a cop. Ah, uh, the money movers. They kept playing up the crims who cut people's toes off. All the advertising in that was about people getting their toes cut off. And there's the doco, not quite Hollywood. Oh, Attack Force Z. That's uh, a Mel Gibson film that kind of vanished without a trace. But I saw it. BMX Bandits, the movie that basically brought us Nicole Kidman. <gasps> it's the 40th anniversary of BMX Bandits. How cool. Stone is a trash Mad Max knockoff, but still enjoyable. Razorback, that's such a bad film. Oh, actually, Long Weekend. That was in um, Not Quite Hollywood, and they made it sound fascinating, like it was really fucked up. The Man from Hong Kong, I kind of want to see, because Not Quite Hollywood also made that sound fucked up. Mad Dog Morgan with Dennis Hopper. Oh, God, so much. I love Howling 3 is listed as comedy. <laughs> Bad Boy Bobby is a comedy. Jesus Christ, if you have the darkest fucking sense of humor in all of history. Who heavens is in there? Oh, is that bloody Elijah Wood in Come to Daddy? That's not like, so that means it's not an old movie. Oh, God, and that Patton Oswalt film seems really weird. I love my dad. dad. I don't even want to talk about it. Go look it up. Oh, and the original Mario Brothers movie. Jesus. Okay. I could probably look at that all night, but I should stop. Yeah. Um... Oh, yeah, that's the... Um... Sorry, that's the Hercules one. I'll hold you on one condition. Lower your nipples. Yeah, I like Patton Oswalt. Um, that film, it's a 
guy who wants to be more involved in his son's life, who's always online. And so he basically catfishes him. Is pretending to be a girl that his son likes. So his son will tell him stuff. It sounds like horrifyingly cringy in like the best way. Um, oof. Oh yeah, you know, good on umbrella. Oh, but is that is that whole service genuinely free? Because they've got some top top notch movies in there. I don't know how they could do that for free. But anyway. So, um, oh, sorry, just flashing away. Patton Oswalt in uh, Justified, the Timothy Oliphant series, she's playing Raylan Givens. In one of the later seasons, second last or maybe even last season, Patton Oswalt's in it. And he's, uh, what's his role? It's, he's basically the weird law enforcement name where he's, Basically, his job is collecting fines. Um, constable. I think he's a constable. So I, I, I think the definition of that term in America is what we would call a sheriff here. Sheriffs here enforce court findings. And I think his role as constable is it's a part-time job where he collects fines and uh and it's Patton as well it's being played for laughs because he's this guy who's in this very pseudo law enforcement role um and so it's it's played for laughs to an extent and then man he comes into his own no it's not a deputy uh Raylan is a deputy marshal um, and I think you get deputy sheriffs and, and sheriff has a different meaning. Now, I think he's a constable is the name of his role in, uh, um, uh, 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 justified. Yeah. Rayland's a deputy U S marshal, um, posted a letterbox links on discord. Cool. Oh, you know what? I just kind of thought I want an orange peel in here. Sorry, give me a minute and I'm going to come back. And I'm actually also going to get some soda water while I'm out. So I'll disappear again. About 60 seconds. Oh. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. With that out of the way, let's go back and put the fridge later. Yeah. That can go there. And I just wanted uh, some orange peel. Because I'm a fancy boy. 
Speaking of orange, made Pippin number three. Oh, that's a good one, yeah. Reduce the sweeteners. Okay, I need to look that one up again to refresh my memory. Let's have a look. All right, what did that do? Okay, so, okay, Pippin number three was obviously my own take because there's a number one and number two. Pippin, sweet vermouth, maraschino, bitter aperitivo. Pippin number one is brandy, Dubonnet, maraschino. Okay. So I've clearly made my own version and called it Pippin number three. I make so many, I, I forget. I, I, and possibly also because they're alcohol, that might be an, another part of me forgetting them. But I see it was basically spirit, maraschino, and uh, bitter red aperitivo. And you kind of vary which spirit you put in. Okay, so I got Pippa number one, Brandy Duponet Maraschino. Oh, are you sorry? Are you calling it a Pippa number three because you did your own version of it? I'm, is that what's happening? Okay, so yours um, was uh, Gin Maraschino Campari Soup for Myth. Nice. Poop Sasquatch, hello. Sound like Elton John. Um, okay, sure. So a hunky cat, I don't know. All right, I, I got distracted. I was going to, oh God, that was a bit fucking weird. Oh, did that bit of ice I wanted to break finally kind of melt a bit? That was a slightly unsettling noise. Okay, but get off my finger, God damn it. Get me a bit of orange peel so I can be a fancy boy. All right, let's put that orange oil in there. That's how I like. Put it in there. Just get those orange oil aromatics going because I like that. Oh, adds to a drink. Man, okay, that cherry bomb's a good drink. Oh, tasty. I'm so far ahead with. Um, uh, posting channels to and, and scheduling videos to my cocktail channel. The cherry bomb probably won't go live for two weeks. All right. Um, yeah, I just saw number one and two on Diffords. Is there a number three on Diffords? I'm going to look one more time. Now that you've said that, peep in. Uh, there's only the two on Diffords. Anyway, I'm right there. <laughs> You're quoting song lyrics I don't know, I think, Strictly Sega. But I can, I, I think I get that you're quoting song, song lyrics. Mm. So the other thing about that drink, it's nice as it's diluted a bit sitting on the ice. That's one thing I like about a good, strong cocktail on ice. It changes a bit over the life of the drink. And ideally, it changes in interesting ways. Cloudy memory. Of where you drink, it is. Look, it's an occupational hazard. I went out, I uh, like date night last night, Mrs. Angry, to a place that um, 
specializes in Central and South American cuisine. And uh, the guy who owns it's got a real thing for um, agave spirits. So big uh, selection of uh, tequilas and mezcals, but also much more obscure uh, agave spirits like uh, Sotol and Rochella and a couple others I don't remember because they're that obscure. Uh, and they have some nice uh, cocktails on their menu. Their food's freaking great. Uh, we had the, like one of their banquets. You know, we just go, oh, your banquet, and they just keep bringing little courses out to you. And it was so good. But I decided one round of drinks. I said, look, um, when uh, the waitress asked me I want to drink, I said, can you just ask like the bar staff, uh, I'd like them to make me an old fashioned with one of the agave spirits and they choose which agave spirit and how they make it because you've just got all these uh, in incredible range of agave spirits that I know nothing about. So I want to defer to the bar staff, just make me an old fashioned with your choice of agave spirit. And apparently it was a tequila, not a mezcal, but it was slightly smoky. Uh, and she said barrel aged. So I'm assuming it was Reposado, uh, possibly Añejo. Fuck me. It was a good old fashioned though. I'm guessing they used agave syrup as the sweetener as well. It was just, you know, an old fashioned is a pretty simple drink. People can still fuck it up or people can just make, you know, a workman like uh, old fashioned, nothing objectionable. This was, I think it was a pretty simple thing they did and it was just so good. So yummy. Uh, so I was really glad I said it. Just like, hey, just make me an old fashioned with your agave spirit of choice. And their choice was a good one. We were worried we were going to get rained on because like most of our date nights, we um, pick a place that you can get to on public transport. And this was a, a little walk from Elstonwick Station. That's oh, kind of a lazy 15 minute walk, 10 minute if you walk briskly. We were not walking briskly. We were taking it easy because we were a little bit early. Um, uh, and there's also the walk back to the public transport is not bad because, you know, we've eaten a lot of food. We like, we had, you know, six courses in this banquet. Um, having a little walk after dinner uh, feels good as well. But, uh, oh, class venue. It's called, if anyone's in Melbourne uh, and can get to uh, Elstonwick, it's called Repeat Offender and it's really good. Ah. Uh, Make quite nice cocktails, uh, but really good food, like just such good food. Um, even just simple stuff, like in one of the courses, there was this like char-grilled uh, corn, like corn on the cob, little mini corn cobets really, uh, with some what I think are traditional Mexican sauces on it. I never thought I would just be so enamored of corn on the cob. This stuff is so good. And that's just one of the little bits of it. Like we had, you know, uh, steak and calamari and a couple of other entrees. So good. Um, I mean, honestly, eating from home at home is best for your uh, budget. We like every second week to a date night. But and again, we try to go for a walk just in the afternoons, usually between four and five. Did that today. Like, oh man, today started off so gloomy. And um, one point, like I went out to the supermarket to get a couple of things and driving towards it, it's just like this wall of dark gray, just like nothing but cloud. Really looked like there was going to be a deluge. But it went away. Like a couple of hours later, there was blue sky and a bit of sunshine. So we went for a walk in the afternoon, which was quite nice. Oh, my phone dinged. Where did I leave my phone? Ugh. Fern, fern, where's the fern?
Why did I leave it all the way over here? Oh, okay. Yeah, Mrs. Angry's having an early night. Fair enough. So I'll try and be quiet. I'm not going to be here. But uh, I'll try and not be too noisy because Mrs. Angry's uh, going to bed. Apparently, if you, it's like, and I should be losing weight, but apparently, if you really want to lose weight, doing a, a, a decent walk, and you don't have to be jogging or anything. But walk for an hour. I don't walk for an hour. We walk for about half an hour. But if if circumstances allow, walking like for an hour or more after dinner, apparently very good for you. We normally walk before dinner. Holy shit. Okay. This clarified... Um, Eggnog is so good. I'm definitely making more of that because I actually bought a thing at supermarket uh, eggnog to make that, and I want to use the rest of it. I might do bolder flavors. Like that one's really sweet. I might put some wacky. I think actually some a coffee liqueur in there, possibly even something with real kick like Fanet Branca, but just a small amount. Favorite fish and chip shop. Oh no, where are you getting home deliveries? We have a, a good one locally that's actually on our regular walk route near a park that's near us. And um, so in nice weather, like spring, summer, autumn, uh, we will sometimes go, let's go for a walk and get some fish and chips and then eat it in the park. Uh, it's just a, a nice thing to do. And we occasionally get uh, really pushy magpies going, go on, get a chip, get a chip, mate, get a chip. Not like you, you know, the beach fucking seagulls will monster the hell out of you. Um, but uh, magpies are much cuter than seagulls. And, and yes, Melbourne has fantastic food, and I've barely scratched the surface of it. Suvlaki King. Everyone went to a place. Uh, I, I haven't had anything like Suvlaki for a while or even, well, that's like the Greek version of kebabs. Um, and there's a few, when I first moved here, like the Caulfield area, God, how long ago was it? Seven years? Oh, fuck, man, I lose track of time. It's so bad. Um, but, yeah, there was nowhere convenient to get halal snack packs from when I first moved here. But in the intervening time, there's a lot of places. So there's a lot of places. I haven't had one for a while, but there are a lot of places I can get a halal snack pack from. Oh, that is good. Possibly a little bit sweet, but fucking good. And I think the sweetness is absolutely coming from the goddamn sheepdog peanut butter whiskey. Uh, tasty as that one. Hmm. Yeah, I think I should definitely do something a bit more challenging next time. Make it a bit less sweet. Because that's fairly intensely sweet. Um, maybe I shouldn't change it too much, actually. Maybe I should just change one thing. I'm thinking put the coffee whiskey in it and uh, that'll cut the sweetness a little bit. Oh. God, it's so fucking yummy though. And I think it is very low alcohol content. It's a winner as far as I'm concerned. So Dr. Jones recently... Tried. Oh, yeah, the Hanky Panky. Lost in translation with Fanet. Yeah, Fanet is interesting. Unless you're a madman, uh, like a Melbourne bartender where they do shots of Fanet, uh, a bottle of Fanet will last you a long time. I do like it as a flavor enhancer. Like, um, for those who've never heard of it, it's what's called an Amaro, which is a bitter liqueur. And it's got these really menthol flavors. 
Actually, look, it might even have a description on the bottle. Look, I have a bottle of Finex in here that I probably bought two years ago because I use it so sparingly. Okay, Finex Barranca. So, I think it's all in Italian actually. So, I can't tell you anything because it's all in Italian. There are other makers of Finet. This is a, the best known one, Finet Paranca. Prodotto in Italia. Oh, here we go. Nope, that's in Italian too. So, oh, there's 39% ABV, which is... Yeah, I got the big boy bottle, but you, I don't know if you can see how much is left in there. It's like a third of a bottle, quarter of a bottle. I probably bought this two years ago. Actually, I had a thought because there was a period where I kept track of what I was buying when I emptied because I was worried I was drinking too much. And um, so I was tracking how long. I had um, various things. This is, uh, wait, is it in my G drive? Infinity Martini booze records. Okay, so I haven't updated this since 2021 because basically it established, in my mind, I wasn't drinking too much. Uh, so for instance, I had a vermouth that took Two months to empty. Pimento Dram took seven months to empty. Costco Vodka took eight months to empty. White Creme de Cacao took four. Man, I didn't think I used White Creme de Cacao that much. Four months to empty it. OP Rum went, uh, man, that only lasted four months. I must have been using that a lot. Bacardi lasted five months. Captain Morgan. Things I wouldn't buy anymore. Captain Morgan lasted four months. The Space Alien Vodka lasted seven months. Another vermouth that lasted nine months. So it was probably well past its... Yeah, okay. So possibly. This might be the bottle of Finette Branca. I bought in March 2020. But this might also be a second one. I'm not sure. I'm honestly not sure. But even if this is a second one, two bottles in three and a half years, that's uh, how rarely I use it. Oh, yeah. No, I, do, I, I literally spent a bit of time. I should track how long it takes me to empty bottles. Uh, and what else? I had a bottled old fashioned that lasted three months. Little bottles of gin from Tiny Bear that lasted six months. Uka Gold, oh, which I haven't had for ages. That's like a yellow chartreuse substitute that's Australian. Four months. Oka Bitter took six months. The Applewood Gin took. Two months, I must have been making a lot of martinis or something. Yuzu Vermouth also took two months. Orange Curacao took four months. Strawberry Cream took three months. Starwood Twofold, classic whiskey, only took two months. It would take me much longer to empty a whiskey bottle now because the difference between 2020 and now, in 2020, I maybe had somewhere uh, maybe half a dozen bottles of whiskey. Now I've got like 30 bottles of whiskey. So it just takes a long time to go through it. Another one, Brogan's Way Gin took five months to empty. Starwood Fortis, which is their high proof one that took four months to empty. Midori, Jesus. Took me four months to empty with Midori, but then I've got another bottle of Midori that I've probably had for a year or two. A couple more bottle cocktails that took me two or three months to empty. Antica Fashionista, another bottle of cocktail that only took, it was a small bottle, only took me a month to empty. And Brooklyn took two months. 
Okay. Yeah, so I I basically did this thing of tracking when I bought bottles for uh, most of a year. Like I started in February 2020 and stopped in November 2020 because it's like, okay, I have enough evidence. I don't think I'm drinking and emptying the bottles too quickly. Ah, your Sophie loves the uh, Midori. I mean, it's what this is. What's not to like about Midori? It's just like a really lightly fruity liqueur, melon flavored liqueur. You can just have it where you can have it by itself on ice. Have it with um, soda water or lemonade. Uh, put it in various cocktails. What's the famous? Uh, Australian created cocktail, the Japanese slipper, a Midori, probably the, probably the classiest uh, Midori cocktail is the Japanese slipper. I love, I saw someone do it on YouTube and they said, this is a cocktail invented, a, a cocktail centered around a Japanese liqueur invented in Australia by a French bartender working at a Greek restaurant. And he went, you don't get much more Australian than that. A, a ringing endorsement of multiculturalism. So, yeah, and the Japanese slipper is not a bad drink. Oh, I tell you what, I'm definitely definitely making another clarified um eggnog look at that i still got that's a 750 mil bottle there's probably 500 400 400 mils somewhere between 400 and 500 mils still in there so i don't know four more drinks anyway damn and it's so tasty Oh, yum the fuck oh, is all I've got to say. All right, now I should behave. Work night tomorrow. I'll round off by drinking some soda water before I go to bed. Because I'm responsible. Yes, I am. I am very responsible. All right, do I get 10 cents back on this? Yes, I'm, I'm still yet to take advantage of the container deposit scheme that started in Melbourne. I went to a place, it's only a couple of minutes away from me, and they went, oh, we're full, we can't take it anymore. I went, fuck. Um, I had this whole rant another time. But this goes in the container deposit stuff. I get tens. I'm probably going to donate it to charity because it's a ridiculously small amount of money. So there's a cocktail called Opal Ice. Equal parts light rum, Quattro Midori, and lemon juice. Oh, that sounds like a crowd pleaser. God, I just realized what I almost said, and I'm glad I didn't. Crowd pleaser. Light rum, Quattro, Midori, lemon juice. Your classic um, uh, rum daisy, basically. And blue curacao. Oh, the combination of those. Uh, if if yeah, if, if it's a light rum, blue curacao and Midori are gonna make it a greenish blue drink. Oh, I might even make that. And when you're talking literally a splash of blue curacao, I might do a float of make it. Ooh, make it in a glass with ice, and not even a chunk of ice like. A lot of ice. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Now, see, I'm, I'm thinking out loud how to do this. You could do it with crushed ice, but I'm thinking just with my small ice cubes, actually shake it with ice and do a, a dirty dump into a rocks glass and then do a float of blue curacao. And I think that would look really good. Man, okay, I'm, I am uh, going to take a note on that one, Dr. Jones.
What have we got? All right, I'm going to put that on my Trello. Um, Opal Ice. A note that you told me about it. Okay, so what ratios am I going to do? Yeah, half a bottle of Midori. Yeah, yeah, it's, I think it was very interesting to see how quickly I used that first bottle of Midori. I think the bottle of Midori that's in the cupboard there I've had for at least a year, if not two years. Equal parts rum, quantro. So I'm going to go three quarters of an ounce of each. Okay. Uh, three quarters Oz light rum. Three quarters of an ounce. Quantre, although I'll use another orange liqueur. Three quarters of an ounce. Midori. Three quarters ounce lemon juice float blue curacao. I can just make that a short. Save. All right. I don't know. Sometime. That's on the list. So sometime in the next couple of months I'll do it. Half an ounce. Yeah, that sounds about right. But I think, yeah, just a, 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 a float on the top is going to look nice. Yeah, I think I'll shake it with a lot of ice. So when I dump it into a rocks glass, it's basically full and then just float some blue curacao. And I think it'll look cool. I mean, blue drinks, automatically party drinks, as far as I'm concerned. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Probably my only qualm with my clarified um, uh, uh, eggnog is it's a bit sweet. So, yeah, next time I'll use the coffee, uh, coffee uh, whiskey. It's not even a coffee liqueur. It's coffee infused whiskey because it's still 40%. So cut the sweetness just a little. Actually, probably cut it a lot. I won't use the peanut butter whiskey again because I think that's the culprit with the sweetness. So I might use a a split of the proper whiskey and the uh, uh, coffee whiskey. Because like I said, I think it's given me the diabetes. God knows what's happening to my blood sugar level at the moment. A little bit of unsweetened, not even artificially sweetened, soda water to um, tone things down a little. Just need to bring it all down, bring it all down. <laughs> I think you can probably tell that I've had a couple of betharages of the alcoholic variety tonight. Um, I'm doing it with my phone. Sorry, I just have to uh, check the last massage I got. That's nice. I always like seeing my friends on the socials posting lovey-dovey things. Okay. All righty. Man, I got told in no uncertain terms 
uh, about using AI generated art and thumbnails by an artist. It's like, you know, that's stealing it. Yep, it is. And I can't really argue with it. Uh, that cherry bomb did tip me over. Okay. Oh, see, so here's the thing, Dr. Jones. By definition, the clarified cocktails curdle. That's how they work. You add a drink with a sufficient acidic content to curdle milk. You add it to milk or something similar, which has a fat content, which is going to make it. Coconut milk works as well. Uh, although, man, I've had so many problems with coconut milk. Sometimes coconut milk has worked flawlessly, and sometimes it's been a huge pain in my ass. And... Uh, eggnog worked flawlessly i was worried at first that it wasn't going to but look at it look at that it's it's quite orange but it's really clear uh and oh shit i one of that clarified cocktail here this one was also very dark before i clear and it's actually much lighter than the eggnog one so yeah so you add a drink with acid content to milk or something similar and it, it curdles it, it separates. And there's a whole fucking science behind this with various things bonding with various things. But you then pour that curdled concoction, which looks terrible. It always looks terrible. You leave it sit for a while to let the curdling really happen. Um, anywhere from half an hour to a couple of hours. Some people talk about you have to do it for 24 hours. I've actually done an experiment and there was no appreciable difference between something I left for an hour and 24 hours. But anyway, you leave it for a little while so the curdling happens, and then you pour it through, uh, fil like I just use filter paper. You can use the nut milk bags or a few other things. Uh, uh, so um, the curds settle to the bottom of your filter and they actually do this incredible clarifying thing where they strip out color and the harsher flavors and you end up with that really clear drink. Normally you have to let some run through because the curds have to sell. The filter paper is just holding it. The filter paper is not doing the filtering. The filter paper is not doing the clarifying. It's just holding the stuff and you need the curds to settle and then for all the drink to pass through the curds and they perform their magic. So sometimes you have to put stuff through again. It's the whole thing. Uh, oh, look, I don't think I figured out anything new with clarified cocktails. I got all my information from other people, but uh, you can flavor the milk, which is wild. Some people will do it with cereal. You know how the best bit of like having a bowl of Fruit Loops or Cocoa Pops was drinking the milk at the end after you've eaten all the cereal and all the flavors soaked into milk. A lot of people will do that. They will flavor the milk. I did that with, um, I actually, I didn't clarify this. I did it with one of my eggnogs. I soaked Biscoff biscuits in milk to get the flavor of Biscoff milk. But yeah, you, you can, you can flavor milk doing that. Uh, the very exciting, uh, new thing is with powdered milk and you bake the powdered milk and then reconstitute it and then it, apparently it just wants to separate so you don't have to use an acid thing so cocktails that don't have any acidic content can be filtered can be clarified which is pretty well um you could make a clarified irish cream whiskey um I don't know that there's any acidic element in a cream liqueur, uh, but you could absolutely, with that powdered milk method I was talking about, uh, or yeah, powdered cream, make a powdered milk or a powdered cream, and then the components you'd have in your cream liqueur, and you'd end up with a clarified version of Irish cream whiskey. That was it, powder. But yeah, no, I did not invent that. I, I um, well, I first saw it on YouTube, but the the method was first published on a site called Punch Drink, which I go to a lot. I would have eventually seen it there, but I saw it first on YouTube. So yeah, no, you can use powdered dairy milk or powdered coconut milk. And I, and again, I think some people have explored 
the science of it and why this happens. But if you bake powdered milk like in the oven, I think it's like 10 or 15 minutes at 375 Fahrenheit. Um, so you're just lightly toasting the powdered milk and then you reconstitute it like you normally would for whatever reason. And like I said, I think some people have explored the chemistry of this. The milk just wants to separate. And that's why you add an acidic element for a clarified cocktail. So with this one, because the milk wants to separate anyway, you don't need an acid element and you can um, pour a cocktail through. I haven't done that for a little while. I did it with an old fashioned, which was fantastic and a Manhattan, which was weird. And there were a couple of reasons my Manhattan might have been weird. One is just maybe it doesn't suit a Manhattan. Two might be the ingredients I used. Um, but I haven't done that for a little while. I am definitely doing it again. In fact, I found, you know, my regular looking for um, cocktail ideas, I found one. And as soon as I saw it, I went, oh, I want to make that uh, clarified with the powdered milk method. It's called a long jeans. Uh, and it's brandy, absinthe, tea, and sugar syrup. Um, and tea is often used as a base in clarified cocktails. And you make it really strong because the clarification process strips out the harsh tannins. So uh, it strips out most of the tea flavor, but it leaves a little bit there. So as soon as I saw this one, which was called Long Jeans, I wanted to make it like, so the base recipe is uh, 45 mils brandy, 15 mils absinthe, which is a lot of absinthe for a cocktail, uh, uh, 30 mils black tea, seven and a half mils sugar syrup. So as soon as I saw that, I went, yep, that's got to be a powdered milk clarified cocktail, that one. Uh, so that's probably the next one I will make. And I don't know how long it will take me to get around to making it. I might not do it till January. Okay, so I've got my uh, clarified milk punch to happen. But that just sounds good. And so I want to do it. In fact, I want to do a big old friggin' old fashioned that way. The clarified old fashioned was so yummy. Um, I did try something with, I, I did a thing with both uh, powdered dairy milk and powdered coconut milk, and they both worked. Um, the coconut milk one, when I made them first initially, they both came out clear. They were darker even than this. They were more orange than this. And, but they were clear but they were an orange brown color and yeah, when I first put them through, they were clear, but after about a day, the coconut milk one went a bit cloudy. So I don't know that the, the oils or whatever came out of solution after a while, whereas the um, dairy milk one didn't go cloudy. It stayed clear. Something I, and also the, the the sort of creaminess of the dairy milk one was exceptional. So I think I'll make at some point a batched clarified old fashioned with um, powdered dairy milk. I have no idea. Oh, no, actually I was thinking like, how the fuck did someone work this thing out with powdered milk? And there was, okay, I'll actually, I'll find the story. It's on um, punch drink. Um, And they were trying to do one thing that didn't work and they realized a thing. Uh, God, I should have bookmarked this. See if I can find it by searching. Uh, clarified, clarified. Milk Punch has lost its mind. Clarify the classics. Uh, 
Uh, no citrus. Oh, no, there it is. You ate a milk punch, no citrus need. Now, I just want the story of how these people came up with it. Uh, okay, so this guy, uh, this appears to have been developed by someone called Daniel Villa or maybe Daniel Villa. Uh, is a bartender at Supperland, a modern southern restaurant in Charlotte, North Carolina. So he was, uh, what he was actually doing was trying to make a toasted milk Ramos gin fizz. So he had a recipe for a toasted cream called for a 24 hour sous vide to toast the dairy. Uh, it, which works, but ties up the sous vide equipment for a long time. Then he remembered a pastry chef hack, toasted milk powder um, that he learned from working in kitchens. So some modern kitchens use it to enhance brown butter sauces. Stumbled backwards into realizing he'd hijack the method for milk punching. So this guy reckons the milk's already been separated once during the drying process. It has whey protein and casein, which are the components of curds through which milk punch is fitted, filtered. But the enzymes have broken down to some degree. When it's rehydrated, the milk doesn't require us to break down. Once introduced to alcohol, proteins will clump on their own, creating a filter bed to clarify the drink. Also works the powdered coconut milk for vegans. Dried milk can be toasted in the oven or a stove top, producing browning method referred to as the Maillard reaction, chemical reaction that causes bread to taste toasted or meat to taste charred, which is a different flavor to caramelized sugar. So his toasted Ramos didn't work because it turned into a gritty mix, but then he tried it with uh, various classic cocktails and it worked so as you call vucare which is one of my favorites has a clarified version called smooth as butter it's got tequila okay so tequila sherry and mezcal benedictine and china and bitters with the, man, that actually sounds really good. So a little bit of science in the world of cocktails. Yeah, there's a whole thing with way the casein proteins and blah, blah, blah. There, there's science behind it. I just call it magic. Because it just sounds so counterintuitive. I'm going to use curdled milk to make a really yummy juice. Well, you know, curdled milk, cheese. And cheese is the best. So, anything, but uh, I definitely will try this. Yeah, okay. The cool thing is the Vucare thing, but we changed every ingredient except Benedictine. So it's normally like um, brandy, rye whiskey, sweet vermouth and Benedictine. And this is tequila, sherry and mezcal and Benedictine and uh, Amaro. But it does sound very good. Damn, it's a big fucking batch though. How many mils? Nine, 15, 18, 20, 23, 23 ounces just of cocktail. So it's like 700 mils of booze. And then, God, that's about a litre. This is making up about a litre. Oh, they're saying this would yield, this would fill a 750 mil bottle. Kind of, kind of seems like it would make a bit more than that, actually. 
This is to make 750 mils of this cocktail. God damn, that's like, I don't think, I don't know that I'd make that much. But that's a whole thing. Yes, Miss Muffet on her tuffet eating her curds and whey. And that's the thing, the curds, which can be very interesting and can be tasty and can also taste awful. But you can't do stuff with it because curds are like proto cheese, certainly like proto cottage cheese. And you can do stuff with them. And the whey, which is more viscous than water, gets added to the cocktail. So the curds are the solid and the whey is the liquid. The milk separates into a solid and a liquid. And the whey is more viscous than water, which changes the viscosity of the cocktail, which gives a pleasant mouthfeel as the saying goes. Uh, although again, mouthfeel, slightly, slightly creepy phrase. It's a slightly unsettling phrase, I think, mouthfeel. Uh, but that's the thing people love saying, talking about mouthfeel. See, every time I say it, I go, that's that's not a, a pleasant um, word, two words, mouthfeel, mouthfeel, one word. I don't know. Uh, language is a fluid and changeable thing. So it's always funny, and I am as guilty of it as anyone but it's funny and pointless when people start arguing, that's not a word, you just made that up. It's like, dude, all words are made up. And all language is fluid. And uh, see, oh, hey, loyalizer, here's a funny thing. I'm uh, watching from StreamYard, which allows me to StreamYard to various things. Uh, and when you anyone puts an emoji. I don't see the, emo if I was on YouTube, I'd see the emoji, uh, on StreamYard, I see the description of the emoji, which I always find humorous hand pink waving. Hello to you, loyalizer. No one says hand feel. Okay. Hand feel is getting into the, um, sexual harassment, um, thing, I think. Having said that, now mouthfeel sounds even worse. <laughs> How are you doing, Lula? I just thought I'd explain that. I get that you were just doing the wave emoji, but I, I genuinely find it amusing that StreamYard gives me the description of the emoji rather than the emoji. Um, it's redonkulous. Oh, God. Yeah, wasn't it? It's, it's very hard to pick the weirdest f phase of memes because stuff always comes up. God, okay, here's where I'm old enough. I remember when Rage Comics first appeared with the fuck face, um, and which mutated into just so many different memes. But I remember when they were getting shared on... Uh, Imja and um, Reddit when they were new. Uh, I remember seeing people go like, no, yeah, I know memes are weird, but this is just too much. I'm not going to get into this. And rage comics seem fucking quaint compared to the weirdness of how memes have mutated in the intervening decade or so. Uh, and again, yes. And what, what I love about memes is you get meta memes like, you end up with a meme that is referencing a meme that was referencing a meme that was uh, referencing an event. And you act when you, to understand the mutated meme, you have to understand its lineage. It's, it's fascinating. And I have no idea. Oh God, you're the man now, dog. Yes. Holy shit. Stuff used to mutate through You're the Man Now Dog so quickly. So, Dr. Jones, the hand feel specific. Yes. No, that's legit. 
I and I actually get that. That's a real thing. I reckon hand feel is a good thing. Like this bottle feels comfortable in my hand. This bottle has the wrong hand feel. And I don't really mean that. I'm just using that as an example. You have legit established hand feel in my mind. Um, yeah, it's about how comfortable you are holding things and how good it feels to hold particular things. That's legit. I'm on board with hand feel now. It's almost time to go to bed. Oh, I finished the last of my soda water. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. You're the man now, dog. Is oh, It's not quite ancient history because ancient internet history is the weird fucked up shit that used to go around on Usenet in the 90s. But it's the past. Yeah, no, this I've actually really enjoyed tonight. It's, it's been chill, but it's been good conversation. And um, I've had a couple of enjoyable beverages. I'm kind of glad I made that cherry bomb cocktail, actually, because when I spotted it, I thought, that sounds good. And uh, I probably put it on my list, God, I don't know, a month, two months ago. And I finally got around to it, and it's freaking tasty. So that's where You're the Man Our Dog was 2004, five. That sounds about right. Oh, yeah, definitely pre YouTube. Yes. And it was definitely making good use of low bandwidth internet connections. <laughs> Loyaliza. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, Jesus, how long has my YouTube channel been there? 18 years or something? So it's like one year after YouTube existed. Um, uh, let's just double check that. YouTube launch. Two thousand and five. So, I joined YouTube in two thousand and six. I'm pretty sure I joined it a year after it launched, and it was just getting big. It was just getting big a year later. Um. So, yeah. So that's so I'm up to seventeen years on YouTube. My YouTube channel can almost drink in a pub in Australia. There you go. That was like literally I got my first fast internet and I'd been doing stuff on a blog because I had this grand idea of doing stand-up comedy and I was like working out material on a blog and someone said, you should do a podcast. And I was thinking of it that I got broadband for the first time and YouTube was just getting big. So I go, I could go straight to... YouTube. I wish I started a blog, actually. Not a blog. I just said blog. I wish I started a podcast back before podcasts really took off because I think I could have really done something with the podcast. I, you know, I had just enormous, enormous fun uh, on YouTube. And yes, shouting shut the fuck up was always fun. And I did always also enjoy... Uh, doing super cuts of all the different ways. I said, shut. I think there's two super cuts of me saying shut the fuck up, uh, which I really enjoy. Oh, you got sucked into the game review wave. Yeah, that's not a thing. I mean, I actually do watch other game reviews and listen to other game reviews. Not a thing I, I did on my own. But yeah, I, I do kind of wish that I started a podcast way back when. I think I could have really gone somewhere with that but anyway thank you dr jones i think i have a decent speaking voice as well and yes you're like some people do love australian accents which i find very interesting because i find this Australian accent a bit nasal and annoying even mine everyone's doing nintendo stuff yeah oh yeah you do sega yes well that that was actually a pretty smart call i think loyalizer Oh, yeah. No, back in the day, I really enjoyed Probably like, Jesus Christ, my my high point on YouTube was probably 14 or 15 years ago. 
which is fucking trippy to say. I, I definitely stopped taking YouTube seriously, like as in, I could make money out of it about 10 years ago, probably the adpocalypse stages. And I mean, you know what? I'm not changing what I do. I'm just demonetizing my channel and I don't give a fuck. And um, I, I genuinely did not adapt very well to changes on YouTube. And that's on me, not YouTube. Uh, and I'm glad you still have fun going back and watching all videos. Sometimes I'll, someone will comment and I'll, I'll video and I have no idea what they're talking about because I don't remember what I say on the video. I got hundreds, thousands of videos on YouTube. I don't remember what's in them. Look, I was like, oh, nice. You're the first Aussie channel. Thank you. Memories. Yeah, honestly, I just can't do it. And again, not really particularly dissing people who do, but I just can't do it. The pranks or the reacting. And that would have been an avenue for me, but it's just not me. It's just not me. Anyway, that fun bit of nostalgia has taken us up to 10 o'clock and I am going into the office tomorrow. So I'm going to go to bed, but I have very much enjoyed conversation tonight. Thank you one and all for taking part in it. That was a fun bit of nostalgia, which I think I'll round off by uh, the ceremonial eating of the cherry. Because it's so, so, so yummy. Mm. 6 a.m. for you, loyal eyes, 10 p.m. for me. Oh my God, it's so fucking yummy. Yeah, honestly, it's, 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 a, it's a good um, legacy. Anyway, so you'll take care. Um, I'm going in the office tomorrow, probably streaming on Tuesday night, unless I'm not, like, you know, when I catch up with the offspring it tends to vary from week to week. It might be Tuesday, it might be another night. You know, I'll be back sometime. I hope you're all taking care in the meantime, and I look forward to having uh, another chill chat sometime in the